Good morning. This is the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Wednesday, September 9th. Looking at the impact map for today, still dealing with that upper level low pressure system. It's a uh, Rotation is still keeping showers and some snow in the higher peaks across eastern Utah today. And uh, further west, however, on the backside, drier northerly winds still producing a risk of high winds and low humidity over parts of southern Nevada and maybe far southwestern um, uh, Utah and the Arizona Strip. Still some lingering showers on Thursday eastern areas. Everyone else is drying up and warming up uh, quite significantly, especially the further west you go, and ironically further northwest. And no significant impacts on Friday as uh, high pressure starts to build on in. Looking at the smoke forecast from the fires across the west uh, Wednesday morning, this is the near surface smoke. You see it all hanging down low and being pushed out with easterly winds offshore. For our smoke here, as things develop, if they do indeed start burning, the smoke trajectories would be taking it on a northeast wind further to the south. Uh, you see that more uh, developing better this afternoon. Similar story, you can see the rotation of the low and any smoke that's being produced being pushed down to the south, but uh, this is just a model and there is a good possibility that with the higher humidity we may not be generating this much smoke at all across the Great Basin today. Um, this is actually the current um, lightning and precipitation map. You see no lightning across the area and no precipitation. Looking at our Great Basin fire activity, uh, initial attack was pretty light, just a new fire starts in the red, a few small ones. It's uh, burning on our initial, on our existing fires. That was a bigger concern across the slink and even up into uh, some of our fires in uh, northern Idaho. Observed precipitation over the past seven days here on the left, minimal across most areas, uh, except a bit, uh, a bit more across uh, some of our eastern areas and across Utah as well. And you can see the dryness uh, much below normal across most areas. And looking overall at current fuel conditions, uh, overall you can see how much things have moistened. That's with the coolness and the precipitation of the past uh, 48 hours. And um, looking at the 100 hour fuels, you can see that they're still driest across western areas uh, a bit uh, of drying starting to occur in parts of western and southern Idaho where they missed out on the heaviest precipitation. Now satellite imagery continues to show um, the uh, clouds and moisture rotating into eastern Utah. Definitely heavy precipitation in Colorado. This is rotating back through here. We have high pressure though ridging back in and ridging back into Idaho where um, there and in western um, Nevada as well as adjacent California things have been much warmer and drier. And if we go to the visible satellite from yesterday afternoon, you can see up here in Idaho, some of our Idaho fires up here in the timber in the north were putting up plumes of smoke yesterday while areas further south and east were cool and moist. Of course, you can see uh, the sling fire down here in western Nevada and also the, the plethora of fires across California and uh, Oregon. So for later today, there is a low pressure, still rotating in some moisture. We'll have some scattered showers, but we do have the risk for wind uh, here on the right-hand side across parts of southern Nevada, uh, the adjacent Arizona Strip. Um, that's because the rotation around the low um, is uh, bringing in some good northerly winds. And you see this drier channel of air here in the orange. So a very, a very fine line between breezy and dry and cool and moist. Uh, relative humidity levels, you can see how much moisture are 30% or so across eastern Utah and parts of Wyoming. But you can see the teens in western Utah, single digits in Nevada, low teens in much of Idaho. And you can see the winds here on the left hand side, the strongest winds here combined with, all, with the highest humidity from Vegas on down to uh, uh, all across uh, eastern Nevada and uh, western Utah. But further north you go, the more these winds will be accompanied by higher humidity levels. On Thursday, the low still lingers across our far eastern areas, dry across the west. That continues. You can see our fire potential map where we're critically dry, borderline the yellow, and still quite moist in the green the further east you go. You see the humidity levels in the 30 plus percent range eastern areas and single digits across western areas. So big change. Not much in the way of wind tomorrow, um, so uh, not looking at a big concern through there. Uh, on Friday, high pressure now starts dominating, building on in that low. It's gone, so everyone starts warming up and drying out. You see that on the fire potential for the Friday period. 
Humidity levels, uh, no more 30s, more like 20% in eastern areas, but still single digits to low teens in the north. And on Friday, we'll have some winds coming in out of the northwest uh, across the Snake River Plain um, as they start drying out. Otherwise, winds overall fairly light. Precipitation over the next three days uh, from about the uh, Wasatch Crest on eastwards, a couple of hundredths of an inch. Locally higher amounts of a quarter to a half inch across southeastern um, Utah. Further down the road on Saturday, big high pressure building in. We get hot and dry in just about all areas. If you watch on the right-hand side, the fire potential map, that starts drying out as well. The high pressure builds and shifts eastwards. There is a trough of low pressure we'll have to watch because we'll see an increase in westerly winds developing across northwestern Nevada and maybe western Idaho late in the weekend or early next week. But it'll also be accompanied by a front, which could produce some showers, maybe some lightning. We'll see how that develops. Um, but you can see at this point we're quite dry on Monday. Tuesday we see some moistening in Idaho as that front moves through. There could be some wetter showers mixed in, but still dry and breezy to the south. Seven day total precipitation is here, and the 8 to 14 day outlook below normal uh, precipitation above normal temperatures in most areas. That concludes our briefing. Have a great day.